Sup fams, Eatmon here, and you are tuned in to the Late Night Channel Eves episode 62. And tonight, I just want to keep things very open-ended. And one topic I guess I like to chat about is people often come to me and ask me, Hey, Eatmon, do you have an artist rep or an agency that represents you? And I answer, no, I do not. And I do wonder, had I perhaps lived in other cities that are probably more, there's a more concentration with agencies and whatnot, perhaps I could have. But you know, everyone has their own path in how they get to become a creator, an artist, a creative entrepreneur. And I very much feel that I was a bit of a, a black sheep in, in this whole creative endeavor. Like you see, like I, my, my trajectory as an artist, like I've been an artist since I was young. Like I love to draw, but the cards that were dealt for me was that the creative industry um, in Ottawa, let's just, let's just say, has a different energy than, let's say, Toronto, Montreal, New York, Los Angeles, you know, big cities, right? A lot of my peers, they went to the bigger cities because of the very nature that... Um, more abundant of opportunities. So it was up to me that I would have to pursue on my own terms as to how to find these opportunities. And I don't know, maybe it's just the way I've been brought up or the way I look at life is that if I were to get an agent, it would have to be like, look, agencies and agents, they're a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. Now to find the right one, the right agent that aligns with your philosophy, uh, your mission as an artist, that's a whole other like ball game. I have heard and know of people who have representatives and they would tell me how they're frustrated, sometimes unhappy, uh, extremely unforgivable timelines. Um, though, of course, you know, some of them would do it because of the, the, the affiliation with brand reputation. Uh, of course, it perhaps the negotiation for payment is quite lucrative. But I'm telling you, like, they're working us creatives like dogs. Like, like, <laughs> like it's, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're burnt out. Um, so for me, I decided early on that if I were to, find an agency or agent, it would be the most serendipitous way, you know, uh, it would be something that would naturally occur, uh, occur, occur, occur. Oh my God. I can't even like, pronounce that. Uh, and many, many years later, I like to think that I have potentially found a couple, uh, again, the one in Japan, uh, that I just recently have, uh, as, uh, we signed an MOU. So, I felt really good. I feel really, I, I continue to feel really good with that relationship We're, and we continue to build on that slowly, but surely, um, and potentially one, another one that's coming up, uh, but that's, uh, but I would talk about a little bit of that like down the road because I myself not sure how this will pan out. Uh, we, we still need to build that relationship. Uh, and as I mentioned, yeah, relationships, folks, all about building relationships. I couldn't care less, you know, 
if this person is going to get me brand X or brand Y or whatever. If I don't align with that individual or individuals to, um, to, 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 yeah, if I, if there's no alignment, then I don't care because I don't care what, what they throw at me, uh, because there has to be a synergy involved with between myself and the agent rep reps, whatever, what have you. Uh, so I decided to go on my own and I'm glad I did because I mean, this is a long story, trying to make a long story short, like, like because Eatmon, every, every artist has their own, is, we're, we're basically our own, on, like, own artist business people. Like, you know, we're artists, we have to create, we got to show the world, this kind of thing. But like Eatmon was, is more, folks, it's more than just a brand is more than just a company is more than just my aka uh it, it turns out that it's like a pilgrimage it's like you know with through eatmon i have seen i have experienced i have met i have i've traveled uh through this you know this 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 entity of called Eatmon, which is like a my spiritual guide. It was like a, it's a spirit. It's like my spiritual self, and uh, and it's more than just who I work with, who I partner up with. It's it's really about how far can I go in this world, you know. And and the more I do things with with Eatmon. The more I learn about my potentials, my capabilities, and my and 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 how you know and yeah and and, and sort of like every year this this Eatmon dares me. Okay, you know, take that next step further. Take it. I want to see if you can do this. I want to see if you can do this. See how far I can go. And if, if it wasn't for Eatmon, I wouldn't be where I am today. I I would. Like I, I'm, I, I'm a completely, like, different person in comparison to what I could have been had I stayed at a, 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 a regular job. You know, like I said, like I, back in the day, I was, you know, doing a full. I was a full time employee at a very, you know, big ex institution, paid well, got health benefits, got all the bells and whistles. But something compelled me that I had to get, you know, in order to really fulfill my full potential in my capabilities and my creation, my passion, I had to do it on my own. And I'm so glad I did because uh, it, it's it's really a, Eatmon is really a representation of, of who I am as a person, spiritually, even subconsciously. At least to think, at least I, I like to think that I am doing my utmost to fulfill my full potential. So, yeah. And because of that, uh, I just, I think also perhaps it was a no brainer for me. I intuitively knew that if I had, I had a third party to dictate what would be the best for me i feel that i would have lacked the the knowledge the know-how the experience and how to do my own business development and doing my own uh networking building relationships again i guess it depends on person to person maybe the pe most people perhaps would rather have someone to to handle that whereas for me i i i really i'm also i enjoy that i believe that's that's also part of the package of being an artist and being a creative entrepreneur. Um, it's not just creating, but it's, it's the full thing of meeting, building, um, um, and, and embracing the uncertainties and the unknowns wholeheartedly. Uh, even today, like even now, uh, there's my, 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 my career is always on it is always a part of part of me in my in my career endeavor uh 
there's a risk and um, uh, being always on my toes and ensuring that, you know, that, that uh, I have to continue uh, and not get complacent. So, yeah. Because had I had accepted, I've been offered to do like getting some representation back then, but something immediately jumped at me and realized this is not a good fit. Recently, I had the opportunity to work with somebody. I'm not going to name any names, but here's a, here's a great example. Actually, I wanted to test that individual. Uh, I was connected to this person who claims, and I wouldn't be surprised, has knows all these brands, these big brands, international brands, you know, just saying... You know all these sweet words to try to get my attention in my mind i'm like okay let's play let's play ball and uh i always feel that okay if i'm going to commit on something i will fulfill it and test the waters through one project and see how what what comes out of it and i also want to test that individual too because you know it's a two it's a two-way street look you know you're going to throw sweet words and really show uh, perceived how great and how connected you are that's one thing but i want to know who you are as a person are you really uh, are you are you a nice person are you uh, a bit of a a hole <laughs> like you know like what kind of person are you like are you are you, are you there to leverage your connections as a as a position of power? Do you think that you can sway me? So I, I remember I did a couple. I said a couple things. I just I threw some couple words just to uh, catch him off guard. And the body language that that individual had uh, was um, conveyed a sense of uh, of of kind of like what is Eatmon talking about what's going on here and and i just want to see what i just you know it's always good to test back always like test the waters see how they respond what is their reaction you know because then you get to see their true colors you get to see the true attitude and um i'm not won't get into details but it, after that episode i was i was determined like oh my goodness i'm so glad I'm so glad that I did not um, pursue it any further because uh, this would be a classic example of a, of, a, of a business partnership that would have gone south so fast and I would have probably been exploited so easily. Uh, but I would have caught it early and that's why I shot it down right away. But through this first little prototype project, I got to know more of this person personality and I also tested him. I wanted to see the type of person he is. So like I said, folks, yes, as you do your own uh, endeavor as a, as a creative entrepreneur, you will face people like them. And you also, again, like I tell you, right, every year I, I get to test myself. I go, how far can I go this? How far? I go, I'll just change things up a bit. I'm going to test some more. I'm going to, you know, make things a little awkward and see what their reactions are. And I think that's very important because then, you know, it's not always you being the receiver end of the, uh, of the people or the person or persons sweet talking into this thing. You have to also uh, reply and retort and, <laughs> and also test them to see what they, what, how they would react. And, if the, most of the time people would always sweet talk you and try to convince you and be in the position of I ha, I'm in a position of, of power because I know X, Y, Z and I could promise you this and that. So you got to be careful about that. You have to watch out for these type of, especially these type of people because they're the ones who probably be the ones exploiting you. So I learned that very quickly. I caught on and I knew and that is why I'm like, if I'm going to exert my energy on this, on these trivialities and this, this, this bull, I won't, I, won't, I won't swear, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, then I would rather take that same amount of energy and effort that I do and just work on myself, work on myself, 
getting out there into the world, building those relationships. And then I would hope that one day through my serendipitous endeavors and my adventures that I would find people that are genuine, authentic, and will uh, see me as equals to pursue opportunities. And like I said, I believe I have found them. And the reason why I say that I would go as far as saying that I believe I found them because through my many, many, many years, my decade plus, 15 plus years as Eatmon, I have been through many iterations and I've built and honed in my experience and really built a very strong intuition to be confident enough to give it a chance. So, 15 plus years later, I finally may have, have now have secured a, rep a representative. And definitely the one in Japan, um, again, it, it, it has already, it, it has already yield, bared fruit in, in the opportunities. But what's I like, what I like about this relationship is that we are growing together. I guess you have to also, depending on what, what you want, right? Um, if I were to work for, if I, if I had a, so this is what, this is my thing. I'm just going off the, uh, uh, the, the cuff here, like off the hook here. If I, if I did the typical scenario where I get represented by an agency that has the typical repres uh, you know, connections to clients in the creative industry, typical design agencies, creative agencies, you know, they have that connection, then I will be just doing the same thing over and over again, right? I mean, if it's, if it's not this artist, then they, they would already have an uh, assortment of other artists that they have on their roster that would find a fit. That's how really the business works. Most of these agencies and creative agencies would have a roster of artists that will they would go through a flip through almost like a catalog. Oh, here's the project. This seems to really align really well with this particular artist because they're known for this particular style. And uh, let's see if we can make it work and negotiate a price. And then I would I don't know creators agencies would probably take a a, a generous uh, or a percentage of the, the the proceeds. Right. So that's the business typical business model. Very typical. Um, in my case, what I enjoy um, uh, currently is uh, I'm also very interested in looking for in people who are 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 like they have connections, they have some relationships, but maybe not specifically focused too heavily on the creative industry. As I mentioned, I'm I, I'm diversified. I enjoy working in different industries, whether it be fashion, video games, institutions, academia, uh, startup life, technology life, even quantum technology. You know, I'm it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's an open book. You know, like why do creators need to be specifically catered to uh, brands that? Um, promote a product like that, that's like you know a creative poster so i mean like i'm i'm looking for diversification in my line of in my line of uh, work uh because creating stuff for just like creative like you know visual aesthetic is one thing but for me uh what if i i work with um a commercial real estate industry what if I work with an eco ecological, uh, environmental industry, uh, you know, uh, oceanic industry, all these kind of things, like all these other, you know, these, these you know, data using data, like, um, you know, satellite, like the, the, the space agencies or the, or, you know, all these kind of things, you know, like, let's not forget about those, like, you know, doing art with data that's, that, that's from like, big uh big industry freaking like robotic industries and stuff like that so and 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 i like to think that there are some potential uh direction in there uh i'm not going to go into any, any more details but from my conversations uh 
with with my with my rep in Japan, there's a, a great deal of potentiality in that direction. Now that gets me excited because that is like completely um, uh, for me as a creator uh, utilizes more of my my left hemisphere uh, analytical side of my creativity. Uh, but again, everyone is different. You know, but then I, it doesn't mean I, I don't enjoy doing, you know, a brand, a clothing brand to promote uh, doing some collaboration or comic book stuff. Those are great, too. But what I'm saying is that I'm, you know, again, I'm as I what I'm saying really is that I am very particular in a type of alliance and, and affiliations that align with my philosophy and my interest. I've been, you know, like I've been hit up with many proposals and people asking me to do this and do that and they're interested in doing this that's great i'm excited i'm happy for them but the question is does it really align with my mission and i only have two hands folks you know uh i i have quite a schedule as well so i have to make sure that i am putting the energies where i need to put into my passion projects too so these are all these things i need to figure out and finding the right people, the right reps to really fulfill and 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 understand where I'm coming from is is extremely important, extremely important for my growth, you know. So anyway, I don't want. Geez, I already went 21 minutes. I thought I'd give you a bit of insight of how I think and how I prepare and how I strategize. Uh, and it's a very it's it's a it's a game of chess, but also uh, you. One needs to be sure that, um, and it's and it's probably one of the toughest things is to be true to yourself. Is do you have to be true to yourself? Don't do it because you know this is a uh, a big opportunity dollar wise. And do it because of whether or not it aligns with your interests, your tastes, and and projects. That okay? Can you foreshadow what are the potential possibilities post launch of the the project that you may potentially work on? Um, so yeah, these are these are important things. And and as I speak, like, as I continue, like right now, like you know, it's still an open book. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, these relationships they're building are these potential uh, eight uh, representatives but uh but yeah that's why i find it so exciting you know always things are for me honestly i just love the fact that things are so dynamic you know nothing is ever stagnant excuse me i have a bit of a hiccup because i just had an incredible steak uh, barbecue uh just a couple hours ago i uh my friend and i we uh we barbecued a tomahawk steak they get, you know, it's like so good. And then we went online to just to see how to like how to prepare it and how to like what the timing is. And today, wow, like we 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 nailed it. Like our first time doing it, and we did it. It was so good. Um, so I'm a little bit like I'm a little full, but yeah. But I think I got a lot of protein for the rest of the month. That's for sure. <laughs> Anywho, I hope you enjoyed what I had to talk about and just to uh, just to give some you know behind the scenes of what I think about in my career and in my current state of the art. And if you have any questions, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe. I mean, I don't know if you guys are even listening or you guys even care about whether you're subscribing or, or liking and all that, but it would, it would help a lot if you, you know, if you just give a little bit of a thumbs up. Don't be shy, it's okay. Uh, or unless these, the, 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 the viewers are the ones who are just sort of like, you know, want to eavesdrop and knowing, what is Eatmon planning next? Whoa. But yeah, give a like, folks. Doesn't hurt to give a like. You like would you what you what like you know if you are listening, someone out there. Anyway, this is episode sixty-two of the Late Night Channel. Eats. Have a great evening. Have a great afternoon. Have a great morning wherever you are in the world. And until next time, tomorrow I'm going to Montreal, so I'll do a Late Night Channel Eats in the MTL sector. Represent. Okay. Until next time. Bye bye.